Here is the third exercise for Introduction to Modern Brain Computer Interface Design. In this exercise, we are back to pure MATLAB without any toolbox. And the task of this exercise is to implement a functioning uh, brain computer interface based on the common spatial patterns algorithm. So um, this is without BCI lab or anything uh, in the spirit of the first exercise. What you're basically doing is uh, implementing two functions. One is the CSP calculation, basically the eigenvector problem and these kinds of things. And the associate, or with whatever method you want to solve it, and the prediction function for uh, common spatial patterns. Um, there's data for that uh, on the website, which is a recording of left versus right hand movement imagination. And that comes from the BCI competition three. That's also different data than, um, than what is included with the BCI lab distribution. Uh, so this is speci specific for this exercise. So to start that, you again start MATLAB as always. You go into the right directory. Again, remember that if you have spaces here, you want to have, you know, opening bracket X and X and closing bracket. Um, and there is a, uh, a script in there called run evaluation, which runs and evaluates the things that you write. So if you open that, um, you see it loads the data, it runs your BCI functions, and it basically does two things. It calculates a misclassification rate, and then it actually displays the output of your thing in a pseudo online manner. So it shows in real time kind of the output of the BCI, I think, as a curve or so um, that you calculate. So the function calls two other functions that are already provided, train CSP and test CSP, but they are each an incomplete uh, shell where you actually put the right code in, uh, as in the first exercise. And, um, and so for this test CSP, there is one little thing, and that is um, there's a variable named b in there. That is basically the role of your single chunk of data. Um, b is a buffer, basically. And there's, there's one little bonus there. That is um, to get actually correct outputs of the online a prediction of your BCI, you need to rescale the, you need to make sure that what you calculate is a continuous value between minus one and plus one in your prediction function. Otherwise, it will just wildly overshoot. That should be some sort of distance from the hyperplane, of course. Um, when you're done with that, what you should get from the function is a printout, which should read 13% misclassification rate, um, if you get it all right, or something in that ballpark. And secondly, if you got the rescaling correct, you will see this uh, online graph. And uh, what I should say is that the test CSP function, when you're done with that, uh, that basically works with any chunk size, uh, if you call it repeatedly. And so that means you can, in fact, use it online with any hardware. Uh, so any EEG system should work with that function. So it's uh, one of the uh, really useful things <laughs> that you hopefully get out of this course. There are a few tips, as always. First and foremost, if the function runs very slowly, um, the reason is probably that you somehow uh, applied temporal filtering to the full channel data instead of to the already spatially filtered data. So if you apply to 118 channels, it's, of course, much slower than if you apply it to six channels. And um, uh, but it makes no difference where you apply it mathematically, because time and space are sort of orthogonal in the way in which it's computed. The second tip um, is, again, there's the equations for everything somewhere in the previous lectures. Um, you should be able to find that. And also, uh, again, if there's any issue, the command line will tell you what the problem is. And most likely, it's some matrix shapes or sizes that don't quite match up that you need to figure out, uh, reshape or uh, transpose or so. And lastly, there are multiple ways in which you can get the covariance matrix of the data under one condition, such as left hand. You can either average it per trial, um, sort of calculate the covariance matrix for each trial separately, and then average that. Or you can, of course, also just calculate the covariance matrix for all the data under that condition. So that's perfectly fine, too. It's going to be a bit simpler. And that's um, all for this exercise. And I wish you good luck.